and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome to church this morning. And um, every so often, I feel the need to do something a bit different. And so this morning, we're doing something that's a little bit more child-friendly, but also a little bit more everybody-friendly. So let me just check. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Have you all got a dog mask, children? You all got one? Hold them up in the air so that the adults can see them. And have you all got colouring pencils? Yep, you have. Now then, the children, you all have permission to colour them in during the service. And here's the thing, now that we're here, if any adult wants to colour in a dog mask, and don't lie to me, I know some of you do, you can go to the back and very discreetly one of the ladies at the back will hand you a dog mask and some colouring pencils if you behave. All right, so this is a genuine thing. Some people find it easiest to concentrate on being with God if they can focus just on that. But other people find it easier to concentrate on God if their hands are occupied with something else. So if you're the sort of person who likes to knit while you're watching television, or the sort of person who likes to be drawing while you're listening to something, then knock yourselves out, guys. Go and get yourself a dog mask and colour in a dog mask. You are more than welcome to do so. And we will be using the masks, children, just so you know. It's not just a colouring exercise. I've got something for you to do during the sermon. Okay, so now let's get on with our worship together. And we'll begin with our prayer of preparation as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are in a dog mask, you are more than welcome to do so. And we will be using the masks, children, just so you know. It's not just a colouring exercise. I've got something for you to do during the sermon. Okay, so now let's get on with our worship together. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. Help your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, forgiven of all our failings, we proclaim God's, God's glory together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, you make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Please take a seat for the reading. The 
reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus say the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to the fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up my shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles returned from their mission. They gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they, sent, they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And whenever he went into villages, cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat. So how are we doing with the colouring, guys? How are your masks coming on? Are they coming along? Good, because when you get to the point where I'm going to need them finished, so get colouring. Now, did any of you have the nerve to go and get one for yourselves to colour in? No. They didn't, did they? You see, you're missing a gorgeous opportunity to do some colouring with the vicar's permission, and that doesn't happen often. Anyway, so to get on to where we are today with this sermon. Oh, oops. I'm dropping everything today. I've had one of those days where everything that I touch ends up on the floor. So we started our first reading, which um, Veronica read to us, is a reading from Jeremiah. And um, if you read the, if you take another look at the thing, you'll see that Jeremiah the prophet is saying, woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Now the context of this is that Jeremiah has heard from God um, that things need to change and that otherwise the people of God are going to be taken into captivity and held um, as captives again. Um, And so God is telling Jeremiah that the people are following, are being looked after by bad shepherds. So, and then there's a bit of a list in this reading about what a bad shepherd looks like. So what do we see? What are these bad shepherds? The bad shepherds are the leaders of the people, They are the religious leaders, the people um, teaching them in the temples, and the political leaders who are leading the people of God astray. So take a look um, and tell me, what are these bad shepherds doing? What does the Bible say? Anybody spot anything there? You can take a look away from your colouring if you wish. And tell me what this reading from Jeremiah says that these bad shepherds are doing. What does a bad shepherd do? He doesn't look after the flock, absolutely right. Absolutely right, he's not looking after the flock. But worse than that, these shepherds, it says, have scattered the flock. So instead of keeping the sheep together and looking after them, these leaders, these shepherds, have scattered the flock. Anybody see anything else in this reading that the bad shepherds are up to? I'm sure there's more. that this is what's happened. I've given the children some colouring to do, and they're the ones who I can rely on to answer my questions. <laughs> Race is smiling at me because she knows it's true. So, what, what the passage here says is, um, you, the bad shepherds, have driven them away and have not attended to them. So I will attend to you, says the Lord, and I will gather the remnants back. They will not be dismayed any longer. The shepherds have destroyed and scattered the sheep. These are the bad shepherds. This is what the bad shepherds do. They haven't looked after. They've destroyed and scattered and driven the sheep away. And then we hear God saying that God will provide good shepherds. And what does Jeremiah say the good shepherds will do? Look after the sheep? Absolutely right. Um, They will um, gather them together. They will gather the sheep together. It says we'll... Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands and bring them back to the fold. What's the fold? Any, anybody explain to those who might not know what a sheep fold is? Grace. It is where they keep the sheep, yeah. It's usually like a little outdoor enclosed space with like a wall, a pen, a pen, like a pen. But it's somewhere safe where they can stay and where there's food and water for them. Absolutely, and they are looked after there. And then uh, God says, when the good shepherd is looking after them, the sheep shall not fear any longer or be dismayed. And, crucially, nor shall any of them be missing. So they won't be scattered and far away. They will be looked after and gathered into the fold and will be kept safe in the fold. Now then, where I come from, I come from the north of England, and in the north of England, in Lancashire, and in Cumbria, where I spent my childhood, there are lots and lots of sheep farms. You don't get so many of them in Enfield, right? But there's lots where I come from. And, and this is a question for anybody, shepherds in the wild hill countries, the sheep are literally out on the hills wandering free. They wander all over the moorland, all over the fells of the Lake District. Um, and they're not kept in fields like cows are, they just wander in the wild. 
Now you tell me, you've seen this on the telly, what do the shepherds use to gather the sheep up? Sheep dogs, absolutely. What are you all colouring in? Dog masks. So, exactly like is that Dante over there with the mask on? I want everybody who's got a mask, to, a, colour, a, a sheep dog mask, not a face mask, we're all wearing masks, to come and put your mask on because I've got a sheep dog job for you. Sheep dogs down here, please. The whistle's not working. Sheep dogs down here, please. Put the pencils down. It's time to put your mask on. Come on, come on, come on. Do I have to round up the sheep dogs? Come on. Chop, chop, chop. Sheep dogs down. Come on. Sheep dogs assemble. Oh, look at you. Absolutely cracking. Come on, here. I'll help tie them on. If you come and stand face forwards, I will help tie them on. Put them on your nose in a comfortable place. And then face the congregation. Ooh, looking lovely. Face the congregation. And we will fasten them on for you. There we go. So sheep dogs face. Who's that? Look at this. You've got a star and a cross. Another cross here. These are marvellous, bright colours. I like a yellow, orange, and blue dog myself. But I also love these. Oh, look at this little rainbow coloured nose. What a good job. These are epic. Sheep dogs. Sheep dogs face there. Now then, I've got a job for you. What do sheep dogs do? They bark. Now they don't actually. They rarely bark. They gather up the sheep by finding them and They're collecting them them and running around them and bringing them back. And do you know what? There are many, many sheep in this church. Many, many sheep. Look at them all out there. Say, Ba, can I hear my sheep buying? I heard them buying. Did you hear them? Go and find them. They look like this. There are many of them. See if you can see how many you can find and bring them all back here. Find all the sheep, there are many, and bring them back. I mean, adults you can join in too, you know. If you see a sheep on your pew or if you can see one that the children haven't spotted, direct the sheep dogs at the sheep in the church. There are none hidden, they're all in plain view. You don't need to lift anything up, they are all in plain view. Sites. Look, the adults are pointing. Somebody come down here because I've just seen Veronica pointing at a sheep down here. <laughs> oh, that's the, the sheep are escaping the foals, look. One here, one here. There's one over here. Oh, look, my mother Patricia is pointing. How many have we found? I can see one more at least that nobody's found yet. Can anybody else see any sheep that the, the sheep dogs haven't found? On the windowsill. Grace? On the windowsill. I can see it from here. Are there any more sheep? Do you know, do you know what? I think we'll be turning up these sheep until Christmas, right? Every so often somebody will find another sheep that has gone astray. Have you got them? cute sheep, aren't they? Okay, do we think we've got them all? Can anybody see a sheep? All right, have we got a lot? Have you got handfuls of sheep? Right, okay, this is what we need to do. We need to put them safely in the sheepfold and we're going to put them here Let's see how much sheep she can. on there. Right, I want all of those sheep safe in the sheepfold. Stand them all up safely. So our sheep dogs have done an excellent job of finding the sheep. How many have we got? We'll count them in a minute. There we go. They're all being set up on the fold. They're nice and safe there. Definitely no predators can get there. Because the thing is about sheep, they are a bit stupid. They are a bit daft. They are not clever. So who here has... A dog. Who here has a dog at home? Anybody? Not many people. But the thing about dogs is the reason they make good 
Sheepdogs, the reason we can trust them to round up the sheep is that they are clever and can be trained to do this. So they can be trained to go and find the sheep and bring them home. Who here has a cat at home? Cats are also clever, but they cannot be trained. Am I right? Sometimes. They cannot, only a teeny tiny. You can't really, you couldn't train a cat to go and round up a sheep, could you? No, you could not. Nice try though. Okay, sheep dogs. Haven't they been brilliant? Our oh, sheep dogs. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Come on, give me a bark. Woof, woof. I think one yeah. is missing. Is there one missing? Because because when we started, you had one in your hand. Oh, you picked that one up, didn't you? I put it back on there. It's all gone back. So let's have a round of applause for my sheep dogs and I want you to go back like this. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now you all wish you put masks on now, don't you? Wouldn't that be more fun masks than blue ones? I don't know. I offer you these opportunities. <laughs> all right. So as I say, sheep are vulnerable. They are vulnerable because they are prey animals. And I know that the children know what prey and predators mean because you cover this in school, I believe. So wild animals will take the sheep and will eat them. And the sheep are too stupid to run away quite often. And they often get caught unless the shepherd looks after them. And the, the sheep dogs and the shepherd look after them. And we see something more about the shepherds in our second reading today, in our gospel reading, when Jesus reminds us and the disciples that we are, all of us, sheep in need of a good shepherd. And of course, Jesus is our good shepherd. Um, and Jesus says that the people that follow him are like sheep without a shepherd. And he begins to teach them. So Jesus' response to seeing the people, to seeing the sheep, is to want to look after them and to want to teach them. And um, immediately what happens in this Bible reading is that people come to Jesus and he heals their sick because that's what a good shepherd does to his sheep. He heals them and looks after them and tends to them and um, keeps them safe and well. Now, is it in the, let me just check the, the pew sheet to see if it's written in there. If you look, yes it is, if you look at the gospel reading, it says here that the reading is Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and then there's a gap, and then it's verses 53 to 56. Now what happens immediately in that little gap there, the bit that we don't read today because it would make it too long, is Jesus feeds the 5,000. So what actually happens is Jesus says, recognises that these sheep need looking after and he had compassion for them and the next thing that he does is he feeds them with, you know, two bits of bread and some fish. 5,000 people, they are fed by Jesus. So Jesus heals them and feeds them. And Jesus also, of course, tries and wants to look after them and bring them all to God. Now, why is this important? And why did I make these children put on dog masks? Well, the answer to this is that sometimes, my friends, we are the sheep, right? We are Jesus' sheep. In this story, we are the sheep, and we need to come to Jesus and to be looked after by Jesus, and Jesus will heal on our, our illnesses. He will look after us and help us and bring us and make us whole. God's healing doesn't always look like the healing that we ask for, but God always extends healing of one description or another to those who ask for it. God feeds and tends and looks after and holds and loves us, and we are Jesus' sheep. But do you know what? Sometimes we are the sheepdogs. I love that you're still wearing your masks, guys. This is making me very happy. We still have our sheepdogs in our midst, and sometimes they are showing us another role that we sometimes have, which is to find the lost sheep. Yeah. Oh, is there another one? Yeah, you missed this one. Well spotted. Just as I say, find the lost sheep, our sheepdog finds one of the lost sheep. It's almost like God has a plan, isn't it? 
So I'll put this sheet, well done, back in the fold. You just done. I, I couldn't have scripted this better, could I? Marvellous, well done. So that is literally what we're asked to do. We are asked to be sheepdogs and find the people who are lost, the people who used to be part of this flock and are no longer in our church pews, the people who maybe we know who might have been raised in the Christian tradition but have, have drifted away and maybe it's time that we brought them back, and the people who have never heard the message of Jesus and God's love, who maybe it's our job to find them and tell them about the Good Shepherd. And sometimes this is our job to be the shepherd, one of the things that when you are training to be um, ordained, like me and Father Azim and Mother Patricia, is that you are asked always to remember the image of Jesus as a shepherd, because we try to be like Jesus, leading our flock. You sometimes hear a church congregation called a flock, and that's because people in ministry are sometimes asked to be the shepherd. And it's not just people who are ordained. Anybody in this church who ever ministers, you are all sometimes a shepherd. For only this morning when you stood here and read God's word, you were tending to the needs of this flock by ministering God's word. Ladies at the back there today, as you welcome people into church and help them find seats, and I say ladies because I can see they all are ladies, you were offering God's hospitality to the people of this. You were welcoming people into the fold. You were doing the work of the shepherd. Anybody who speaks and prays and leads, anybody who talks to people about Jesus and their faith, you are standing in the place of Jesus as a shepherd. You all have a ministry. Your ministry is sometimes to be the shepherd, sometimes to be the sheepdog, and sometimes it's okay to be the sheep and to be here and worship God together and to recognise that we all need the good shepherd to guide us. Amen. And so, as we come to the end of this section, sheepdogs, sheep, let's have a bark. Sheepdogs, let's have a bark. And as a shepherd, let's say together a great and joyous Amen. 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 Thank you. And now, if you're comfortable standing, let's stand and proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God, truth from God, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. rising of the sun and the setting, let us bring our, fares, our prayers to the Father. Heavenly Father, your Son is our cornerstone of 
faith and the good shepherd to us all. In these days when your rule is questioned by the world, show us the best ways to restore your rightful place in the public imagination as well as in personal testimony. Too many people think of you only as a safety net. If all else fails in the world, open their eyes to see that you are the central to their fulfillment and as individuals and as part of our learning community. Lord, in your mercy, May your church reflect your son's love for the whole person so that our lives as Christians can be both active and reflective and so enable every member of your church to fulfill their potential. Help us to give a high priority to succession planning as your son prepared his disciples for their mission after his ascension. Set the Holy Spirit free to amaze us all in the people choose, chosen to lead and those chosen to be faithful disciples. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. stretch our minds and our visions, Lord, to seek to comprehend the abundance of your creation. We give thanks for the experience of travel for the thrill of seeing new places and meeting people from other cultures and faiths. May we respect difference and honor diversity while acknowledging the unique revelation of your divinity through your son. And where there is conflict between peoples and friction between religions, especially in this and other countries at this time, May the peace that you, only you can bring be at the heart of conflict and re resolution. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those coming to the end of their lives. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit. Bring relief from pain and hope for the future through the love of families and friends. Lord, in your mercy, we give the thanks for those that we have loved, those that remain within our hearts. In that moment of silence, Bring those names to the Father. May those who mourn know the solace of happy memories and the assurance that their loved ones are now at peace with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we come to the time of sharing peace, which we still do, of course, in a socially distanced way, by signing to one another. Jesus says to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled or afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
that to you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to set before you, fruits of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become for us the bread of life and the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the <coughs> never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, from the power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same day that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me great is the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of pray, prayer and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Old Helm and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we shall share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please take a seat. So those of you who have email and who um, receive emails from me each week will um, receive an email or will have already received an email this morning in which we reflect on, um, on the lifting of COVID restrictions from tomorrow. Um, I've mentioned this already in services, uh, but we've now had further clarification from the Church of England. And the Church of England has, um, and has pointed out that in law, the decision about services rests with me, the incumbent of this parish. So I will be the person who has to make decisions about how we proceed in our church worship once restrictions are lifted. So I will be the person who has to decide whether we maintain wearing masks, whether we keep the pews roped off and ask people to sit socially distanced. It will be me who ultimately has to decide whether, we, whether and when we start singing again. It will be me who has to decide whether it's safe to have coffee and tea after the services, whether it's time to go back to full length services on a Sunday. By the law of the Church of England, which is the law, in fact, of England, it is my responsibility to make those decisions and I will take that responsibility myself. However, I will do that in consultation with you. So, I am aware that there are people in this con congregation who cannot wait for tomorrow, who cannot wait to fling away their face masks, who cannot wait to hug people and visit people and hug each other at the peace and welcome everybody. I am aware that for some people tomorrow is Freedom Day. But I am also aware that for some people, and I include myself and my family in this, tomorrow is a time of some fear and trepidation. If you are worried about your health, if you're worried about the health of people that you love, if you're simply anxious about returning too quickly to what we used to think of as normal, I hear that as well. So wherever you are on that scale, whether you are rejoicing or anxious, let me know how you feel. And over the course of the next two weeks, 10 days, I will make a decision. We have a PCC meeting a week on Tuesday. We will discuss this at that PCC meeting. So you can also let your PCC members know how you feel. But ultimately, the decision is mine. And with a heavy heart, I will be the person who will take that responsibility. If you are unhappy with the decisions that I take, just let me know. Please know that I will listen and will take into account every opinion that I hear. But I will not be able to square a circle. I will not be able to take everybody's opinion into account and make it right. For everybody, make it what you individually want. My job is to listen and to make the decision that seems right for this place at this time. Know also that we will review this constantly. I spend a lot of time reading the science and the research, reading the stuff that comes from the church and the government, keeping an eye on local figures about incidents of COVID here. So we will continue to review this. Whatever happens, we will review those decisions in order to approach this in the best way possible for this church. Okay. You know where I am, you can talk to me, you can ring me, leave a message on my voicemail, text me, email me, my details are on the pew sheet. Or indeed on the website if you're watching online, you also can get in touch with me too. Even if that means that you're staying at home because you don't feel safe coming into church now. I will hear you and take your opinions 
Um, as you know, um, we were planning on having a workshop after church, but because of all the COVID stuff, and also because it just works better from a planning point of view, we're delaying that um, until September. Uh, so please put the 12th of September in your diary. That's all written on the pew sheet as well. We have started doing evening prayer in church at 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. You are all welcome. We've had a very lovely first week, haven't we? And some people here have been coming along to that service. I realise not everybody is free at 5 o'clock. I'm well aware that lots of you are at, church, at work or doing other things. But you are always welcome to pop in. It's a short service, about 20 minutes, 25? Mm -hmm. About that. And you are more than welcome to come and join any time you feel like it. Right, have we got any birthdays? No birthdays. It's a birthday this week. Imagine. No birthdays in Edmonton this week. So, in that case, we will move on and we will come to the end of our service. And God's blessing, for which is definitely worth standing up if you're comfortable doing so. And so as we remember our sermon today, as we remember that we are both sheep and shepherd and sometimes sheepdog, I say to you that Christ, the good shepherd, laid down his life for us, the sheep. And may Christ draw you and all who hear your voice and his voice to be one flock within one fold and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>